When Epiphone announced their Inspired by Gibson line a few years ago, I think I'm right in saying that players around the world were rejoicing as, in Epiphone's own words, they were releasing guitars with all the features players want. Obviously, the main thing was to bring these two names even closer than they have been before and to get the specs in a kind of similar ballpark. The Inspired by Gibson line is quite vast, so I'm not going to go over all of those guitars today, but what I am going to focus on is just one core acoustic model, and that being the workhorse of the entire Gibson acoustic line. J45. I won't go into too much detail about the history of the J45. We actually did a video kind of explaining the difference between quite a few of the Gibson Montana range, which is their acoustic line. But for anyone who wants a brief summary, since its creation in 1942, it has been one of the most popular, if not the most popular, dreadnought acoustic guitar around the world. Fun fact as well is the 45 in its name actually refers to how much it cost at $45 when it was first released, but they definitely don't cost that now. <laughs> Some notable players over the years being John Lennon, Lucinda Williams, and even Slash, who's actually got his own signature J45. It just goes to show that everyone's favourite big hat guy loves the J45 as well. So let's just jump right into it because there is quite a lot of specs to cover. Now, if you do just want to hear the difference between these guitars, the video is split up into chapters, so you can just jump right there if you do just want to hear the tones. So of course the two models that I've got in my lap right now, this is the Epiphone inspired by Gibson J45 and this is the Gibson 50s J45. I've not went for a standard just because there's a couple of features that are actually quite similar between the two of these. With the standards as well, there's similar sort of features across the board, so it's not gonna to be too different. Mostly just the neck shape, some of the hardware and the tuners, and really that's the main difference between the standard and the 50s and the Gibson model. Both of course going for that iconic J45 sloped shoulder dreadnought shape, which just means that basically the shoulders of the guitar here. They're a bit more sloped than a traditional dreadnought shape, which it'll kind of take away some of that high end, but then it'll also just, you know, it's, it's a bit of a different shape to sit on your body. I quite like this personally myself. Each guitar is also all solid as well, which is one of the key differences when it comes to these inspired by Gibson Epiphones. They have a Sitka spruce top and all mahogany back and sides, and that's on both guitars there. They also share a very similar scale length of 24.75, I've got a 12 inch radius and of course I've got 20 frets if you kind of fancy going up to the dusty end there. So now the differences and I'll just swap over to the Gibson just so I can show this off as well. Like most Gibson acoustic guitars the G45 has a nitro finish on it as opposed to the Epiphone's gloss finish. Now it is an aged matte finish on this so it is going to feel kind of similar to it. For anyone who has played a guitar that has a nitro finish on it it's traditionally a much thinner layer of paint that of course is going to wear away over the years but one of the things that a lot of purists will actually say is with the thinner layer of paint that's on it it does allow the guitar to kind of breathe and move a bit with acoustic guitars. Obviously the main thing is that the wood is vibrating and it's resonating and if you think if you put a kind of thicker layer of paint on that that's going to restrict it so certainly for nitro finishes it does affect the tone ever so slightly to you know to the untrained ear certainly but as I said purists are all about that on their acoustics. With it being a thinner layer of paint also it is going to age a lot more naturally as well so where you're kind of strumming where you're arm is sitting that's going to kind of wear away and it's going to have like a nice kind of like natural relic job over the years but of course with it being a thinner paint too the kind of structural integrity of I guess the top of the guitar it's a little bit more susceptible to bumps and dings whereas obviously with a gloss finish that's going to stay like that pretty much throughout the entire guitar's life and it is going to be a little bit more durable especially if you're you know taking this at gigs if you're throwing it in the back of a van or or if you've got quite an active house with, you know, say pets or children running about. Keeping with the body in particular, the bracing on the inside of the guitar. Now, this is obviously quite a deep topic when it comes to anybody who's really, really into acoustics. To kind of keep it nice and simple for anyone who's not really too in depth with that, the J45 has got what's known as an X bracing, which is basically just struts of wood that are underneath the top there. And that's what obviously 
keeps the guitar from imploding in on itself. The Gibson opting for the more premium hand scalloped X bracing, which will have been done by people at the Montana factory, whereas with the inspired by, it's just a more traditional standard X bracing. The hand scallop features on the Gibson, of course, is just going to add to that extra bit of resonance because some of the struts have been obviously scalloped down a little bit. Just giving more of the areas just that little bit extra movement, you know, to kind of like bloom and really resonate the tone. You'll hear that in the sound clips that we've got later on in the video. As I mentioned earlier, the neck shapes on both of these are ever so slightly different. Starting with the Epiphone, it's got a kind of standard Gibson rounded C shape. Now, that sounds exactly what it is. It's kind of a C shape if you make it with your hand. Nice and comfy, not anything too crazy. Whereas with the 50s Gibson model in my hand here, this does have a slightly kind of chunkier and deeper neck. It's, it does feel a bit more like an older instrument. And for me, I quite like those bigger necks. For anyone, you know, with quite small hands or people who like a skinnier neck, you might want to opt for, you know, one of the other models that have got those slightly smaller necks on them. Worth noting that the standard Gibson J45 has got a slim tapered neck. It's kind of a C shape as well. So it's going to be very, very similar to this and keeping with the neck as well. The Gibson model opts for rosewood, whereas the Epiphone opts for an Indian laurel fretboard on there. Both have got really similar qualities to them, but of course the rosewood is the slightly more premium option as well and certainly is, I guess, the better wood if you were going to say. Moving up to the headstock, and I'll grab the Epiphone for this one again. We have got obviously the most visually sort of different thing about these guitars and that being the headstock. Of course, this not changing anything drastically about the guitar. This is purely a personal preference. And of course, naming the headstock is quite important to some people. Both guitars opting, of course, for that traditional Gibson three in a row tuning pegs on both headstocks. They're going for that kind of classic cream button look as well. I think this is really, really, really cool. The Epiphone opting for just Epiphone branded ones and the Gibson have actually loaded with Grovers. Now, on obviously playing with these guitars, I do think the Grovers have got a little bit more ratio on them. And for those who don't know what ratio is when chatting to tuners, it's essentially how many times you need to turn it or how little you need to turn it before it actually starts to move as well. Um, there is quite dramatic sort of what look like math problem numbers when it relates to these. I won't even bother getting into that. From using both of them, the Grovers are definitely a little bit more sensitive to obviously those small adjustments. Definitely the Epiphone isn't letting out on the tuning aspect of it, it is holding its tune rather well. One of the last few features before we dive right into the sounds as well is just to make a note of the electronics that both of these guitars are loaded with. Now they both do have pickups in them right away and the controls are discreetly kind of hidden right under the sound hole there. So, you know, there's no big chunk taken out of your guitar. Also, the fact that they're loaded with pickups as well just means that if you do need to play amplified, you can do that right from the moment that you walk out with these guitars. The Epiphone is loaded with a Fishman Sonitone and the Gibson opt-in for their kind of traditional LR Bags FTC system in there. Okay, now time to dive into some sounds. Now, we will put the name of each guitar on the screen too, so it's not gonna be a blind listening test and I'm gonna try and keep what I played as close between each guitars as possible. We're micing these guitars up with a Shure SM27 today and I do have a DI going through a Boss Katana on the acoustic channel as well, just so you can hear exactly what these pickups are doing.
safe to say with both guitars, they are absolutely fantastic. One of the things in Guitar Guitar HQ that we all really like to do is obviously when I take a nice guitar out of its box, is if we all have a goal and we all give our opinions to each other and everything like that. And we all were absolutely blown away by this Epiphone. It's just, it's such a lovely guitar to play and especially for obviously the price bracket that's coming in at, it's absolutely fantastic. But I guess the real question is, is the Gibson that much better? Well, I think it really depends because one of the main things when it comes to Gibson Acoustic and what a lot of people will tell you and what you know we say to customers as well is it's, it's a lot about feel is as much as it is with sounds. So when I say something feels great, you know, that's completely subjective for me. It may feel great, but for you, it may feel completely different. There is, of course, the subject of where they're built to. Now, obviously, US made guitars, they're still one of the kind of leading builders in the world and a lot of your best guitars will come from there. I think in today's landscape, it's... <sighs> It's not really right to say that any import guitars are not as good quality as some US built guitars. You know, over the past 10 years, that quality has just risen and risen and risen. And certainly some of my favorite guitars that I've played over the past few years have all been import guitars from say Indonesia or China or wherever they're built. But of course, there's no denying that US built guitars, they have some of the best builders in the world. They've got a long lineage behind them as well. And there is really something to be said when you get obviously a US built guitar in your hands. Kind of on that topic as well, we do have to chat about the name. Obviously, the name of the brand, whether it be guitars, cars, clothes, anything, there really is, you know, there's, there's an attachment to a certain level of quality that comes with that. And certainly when you've got a legacy name like Gibson, you kind of, you know, you're you're buying into that legacy as well. And you know there's a story history with so many players that have played them. And absolutely, if you've played guitar since you were a teenager like me, you'll have grown up with these guitars and you know how sort of famous and how iconic they are. So there is absolutely something when it comes to the name. And as we ask, all the time. Who are these guitars for? Now, I think this one is maybe a little bit more nuanced because say you're a gigging guitarist, say you are out, you know, four or five times a week, whether that be playing pub gigs, whether you're touring, whether you're throwing your guitar on the back of a van, whether you're just jumping on the tube or a bus or something to go down to your next gig. Certainly, if you have a fancy four figure price guitar, you're gonna be a little bit more hesitant to maybe take that out. You're gonna be a bit more worried about it. And you know, maybe you just do want something that's gonna be a total workhorse and it's just gonna sound and not let you sound really good and not let you down and just, you know, give you everything you want. And if that's the case, I would absolutely implore you to check out the Epiphone. Whereas on the other side, if you are, you know, looking for that absolute dream guitar and certainly something that you've maybe saved up for, or, or you can you know you can afford this kind of guitar then the quality and the lineage and just again the feel of a Gibson is just it's it's really nothing kind of you know nothing other than maybe the inspired by Epiphones can compare to because as I said there's just something about these guitars that the quality and the lineage and I do sound a bit like a broken record but I mean that's the reason why they've been in business since you know the 40s the 50s is there's just there's nothing quite like them but of course what I would definitely say and this is if there's any takeaway from this video I would absolutely implore you just if you are in the market for a J45 a J200 basically any Gibson acoustic that has an inspired by counterpart even if your heart's set on the Gibson even if your heart's set on the Epiphone I would encourage you to try both of them just to see exactly how the different feels and the different sounds and the way that they react to you just to see exactly what that does. You may be surprised on what side you kind of land on, or even just to have that reference in your head, because obviously guitar is such a interactive medium, you know, it's, you put your hands on it and you strum it and you play them, you know. You're not really gonna have that reference until you get them there, and certainly I don't think anyone in a guitar guitar will frown at you for wanting to try both, just to see exactly what it's like. But really, what I think I'm trying to say is, I think Epiphone absolutely nailed it with what their mission statement was, and that was to make you a guitar with all the features the players want. But what do you think? Have you tried the Epiphone inspired by Gibson line, whether that be the acoustics or the electrics? Let us know down in the comments, and as always, give us a like and a subscribe down there. I have heard through the grapevine that that does help a channel, but why don't you do it and let's see if it'll actually work. And you know, and for every like on this video, of course, I'll play 
a G to a C to an A minor on all of these guitars. But until then, I've been Kieran. Have a great day.